Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news, discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's work and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and I'm pretty sick today. People who aren't sick today are Ian. Hey, I'm Weary. Also joining me is Ben. Uh, I'm Overlord Jeebus. Uh, we also have a different accent in Evgeny. Guess who's back? And back new to Shark No, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I am Argent. <laughs> no. That's not how this goes. You got to script in the joke, man. I'll be that, 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 that's the idea. I was going to go off script and it was going to be real fun and the Whoa. audience was going to. Just, just go. Just well, go. Evgeny, I know you're new to this, but but when it comes to his intro, Eric likes, I like his, my intro. Eric likes his intro. I like scripted, my intro. So. I like yes. it. I like it. Uh, and new to Shardcast is Rosemary. Hello, I'm k And I'm Chaos. And we're, we're going to be fully packed today with five Shardcasters. Yeah, that's, that's what we're going with. We, we've, uh, done, we've done it before, haven't we? And it was we we ha- we've had five before. We've had five before. Yeah. Uh, it's gone okay for a, a couple of times, reactions. actually. Yeah. Uh, today we're going to talk about Jordan Con, and we're going to talk about Woo! Jordan Con impressions, uh, a very exciting new excerpt, uh, and various words of Brandon there. And uh, this will probably be two or three episodes. We'll see. And. Evgeny and Rosemary went there, so that's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I convinced people to come other than me this year. It was Great. awesome. <laughs> we yeah. did We did have uh, 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 what I consider a pretty high number of charters. You did. You did. That is uh, very true. As, as is the term for members of the 17th active member. All members of the 17th charter. Yes. Yes. And many arcanists who are con. And, on and many arcanists. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. We we transcribed that stuff just having, time. yeah, just having the ribbons there this year actually brought a lot more lurkers out of the woodwork. The ribbons were cool, and no one knows what we're talking about. But uh, <laughs> we can we can post the people a photo. who listen who have been to Jordan Con That's will right. know uh, when they finish writing that um, news post sum up of Jordan Con. Like I'm sure there will be a picture in which there, which will be out before this podcast is out. Obviously, right, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're really yeah. good at getting written, out, written stuff out quick. Shut up, Ben. <laughs> hey, hey. So, in my defense, I got like my job is to get wobs, not to write articles. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And no, I did he, my he, job. He's needling me there. It, it, that, that's all on me. Yeah. So, let's start uh, with the news first of all. Uh, we do have some news, actually. Oh, I clipped. Yeah. So, Dan. Dan Wells, who is one of Brandon's writer friends, like they do writing excuses together, has finished his draft of the Apocalypse Guard. Great. So if you remember, Brandon wrote the book, it wasn't working. The editor didn't think it was working, so he passed it off to Dan to work on, and so Dan has finished his part. So woo. Great. Apocalypse Guard, it's it's not Cosmere, but is it part it's, it's part of one of his is Reckoner series, yeah. It's Reckoners, yeah. Reckoners, yeah. yeah. But is Cosmere Reckonverse? No. Shh. No. No. <laughs> definitely not. Also, we have news in that Shardcast at last is on iTunes and I need to go on a slight rant about iTunes, okay? If if you like iTunes, that's great, but I need to tell you the hell that iTunes gave me. In that it just wouldn't let me log in to iTunes. It just refused for like a while. You you log in onto iTunes's store and it, I'm like, ah, all right, this is the podcast where I submit the podcast. I log in, blank screen. Great, Apple. <laughs> Seriously, just, not even kidding. Just they, they just blank provide screen. just quality products for everyone to use. And then when I finally got it to work, it made me log in about seven different times. Like it would just keep looping like that. Yeah. It's really great. It's nice. High quality. High quality, but you can find us on iTunes and feel free to leave us a review. <laughs> Woo! Great, oh, and it's also on the reviews. Play. The reviews yeah. will be fun. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if we have any reviews yet, but uh, and you, yeah. So wanted to mention that. Uh, of course, you can't only blame iTunes because could I have done this like several years ago? I mean, yeah, <laughs> yes, okay, yes. What do you mean you haven't been trying to do this for the past four years? <laughs> hey, hey. Okay. 
every day. Every day. That's right. Logging, every logging day. in. Maybe yes, today is right. going to be the day. The, today is going to be the day. <laughs> no. The, uh, I wish it were so. So, Evgeny Rosemary, tell us about Jordan Con. Tell us about your impressions. What happened there? What, what, what's up? Oh, boy. What were oh your highlights? <laughs> um, I've been... So, this, this has been my first con. Uh, not not just Jordan Con, any con. And my overall impression, as I've been telling people, is that those three days, I mean, technically four, because I, I went there a little early, probably, actually, literally the best days of my life. <laughs> wow. Um, which... He was this bubbly, happy thing the entire time. <laughs> That's very it was adorable for, for I've got it, so. it is. It is true. Is not what I was expecting to hear. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, which, which, which is why some people thought I was not the real Argent. Like the real Argent is not this happy. He's made of salt. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. We'll, we'll go back to your uh, regularly scheduled salt. <laughs> you Kremlings. <laughs> Welcome um, to Saltcast, the Brandon Sanderson Saltcast. <laughs> it's just, Salt it's just is me. the epic god metal. You know <laughs> just what shard is related to sodium? Oh god. Sodium. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> All right. All right. In concre- contrast to Evgeny, I've been doing conventions for a while. Um I'm I'm staff on Conquest here at home in Kansas City. This year was my third Jordan Con. Um, and, and of course, I was the one who lured everyone else into coming. I am You're a beautiful you know, siren, Jordan Con bringing, evangelizer of yes. the shard. <laughs> and, uh, and this was also, this was uh, my first year getting to be on panels. And let me tell you, it is a glorious feeling to be able to just sit up there and talk oh my God, instead yeah. of having to raise my hand and be called on. And I'm just watching all of my fellow sharders sitting there in the <laughs> audience twitching. I'm like, that used to be me. <laughs> yeah, now, but now we're on this show. That's only once a year. We do this weekly. So to, now um, we're here. <laughs> to, to, to offer context to this, because I, I would very much like everyone to be aware of how much pain we were in. Yes. Um. We did have several prominent either Coppermind editors or Arcanum Arcanists. We were usually sitting in the same role because because we're friends now. Yeah. And and every time somebody would say something we we thought was either inaccurate or or <laughs> wrong, literally ever like the entire row of seven people would just pull out phones, go to the cover mine, go to our channel, <laughs> and 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 look for validation that we were in fact the only people who have the right to be correct in this fandom. <laughs> and, and in fact, Gator Girl t- was telling me about that in a PM, yeah. and I'm like, I, I, my response was. Oh, uh, I hope. Uh, hopefully, I wasn't uh, triggering too many of those, and she never responded. So clearly, I must have at some point brought dishonor upon the shard. But oh, I, I will you, say there was when, one when when you're <laughs> recording, like you do, just get dumber. Like we edit yeah. this show, so we make yeah. ourselves sound smarter. I will say that the one episode I'm not on of this where it was just. You Eric were very upset Jeebus. about that. Sorry, I was like you, very you mean, like, frustrated. The best episode we've ever made. I think you'll it find. was it was well received. <laughs> yeah. Um. You so, were very bye. frustrated. That's true. <laughs> yep. Yeah. End call. Um. <laughs> but it like it, it it's like you know being a professor when when you're at the board and you're talking you're just dumber than yeah. than you would be and so I, I, that, I, that's what happens when you're at a panel or re- recording a podcast. <clears throat> your your brain power is 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 going to so many different Absolutely. things when you're up there. Absolutely. I mean, you're you're thinking about a lot more than the people in the audience. And also, are. like, ah, and, yes, this quote, I remember exactly where it is. And yeah, <laughs> things like that. Yeah, it's like when you're watching a let's play uh, on YouTube and you're <laughs> screaming at the screen, like. About how the person yes. is so stupid to not notice the thing that's right there, <laughs> or or at least blind. This is yeah. how you do the puzzle. Oh my god! Oh. I was like, I, I, I've, I'll listen. I listen to obviously I listen to the shardcast and like oh, yeah, you're uh, like the only one on the cast who does. <laughs> I know. I'm like the only person who listens to every single episode still, and uh, I'll good. notice sometimes people will like uh, we do it. I do it. Well, we'll just we'll get like really stuck into like one specific thing, and we'll just talk about it for, like twenty minutes, and I'll be listening back to it, and I'm like, oh my god, we missed this really obvious thing that makes the next twenty minutes completely pointless. 
I, oh, I yeah. Do, yeah, that's true. <laughs> there that's have been true. times where I'm like, the two days after we recorded, just like, ah, I should have mentioned, like, this. <laughs> like, ah, it's so obviously connected. And and it is yep. it is worth mentioning that because we do this in a very non-scripted manner, we are going to make mistakes like that, and that is yeah. that is perfectly okay. Yeah, and panels are um, the most non-scripted of all, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we do, we do all go in prep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Billy makes sure that we have something, you know, we've got notes and things that we work off of, so we're not just sitting there saying whatever leaps into our brains first. Um, Billy, at the beginning of any panel, will sit there and talk about how he knows nothing and, and yada, yada, yada. Billy had yada, good questions. He's actually a He's a very, he's a very yeah. good panel moderator. He knows how to run a panel. He knows how to make sure all of his panelists are prepped, and, and he keeps things moving. It's yeah. I'd rather him be like that than know everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, like that's a useful he does his skill. Job very very well. Yeah. What was your favorite panel, Kamen? I Honestly, it, it's hard to really narrow it down because I had so much fun on all of yeah. them. Um. I even got to be on a panel with Karen, which was pretty cool. Now Ooh. she's at least she's aware that I exist as a human being. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's what Karen you tell Alstrom, us? Yeah. Uh who's yes. the continuity editor for mm -hmm. Cosmic Stuff. Yes, and she had fantastic rainbow hair. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. There are photos in the Jordan Khan Facebook group. You can you can find those. Yep. Lots and lots of pictures. But yeah, I had a lot of fun on panels. Um I know I had I had some pretty good moments on the Oathbringer panel. Um, I kind of wound up opening up a bit about mental health stuff oh, good. and wound up saying a lot more than I actually had intended to. But Billy just kind of let me run. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, there was a lot of positive feedback from good. that. So, yeah, that I mean, the mental neat. health is kind of a big deal in Oathbringer. Yeah. yeah. And then I think also one of my highlights of the con were were giving bridge pork to 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 uh, oh Brian yes Steele. yes you you <laughs> that was funny. Brandon looked at me and kind of giggled in that way that you know he does when you know he's thinking, uh, "Damn, my my fans are crazy people." I mean, but again, he's very bridge familiar. With that. Kara and Emily went gaga over them <laughs> they were just squealing and and they were also just excited about the fact that someone had something for everyone even the a couple of people from dragon steel who weren't able to be there i had enough porgs for them to take them home to them and they just thought that was awesome so i was i was pleased for for those of us for for, for the listeners who unlike us yes. are not best friends with the entire team sanderson by now <laughs> Uh, do you want to talk about Bridge Porg real quick? And and who's this who's this okay, Emily lady so, you mentioned? Yeah, um, so I've been crocheting porgs you know, from, from the new Star Wars movie, and then I decided that wasn't interesting enough, so I started customizing them. And then I made Kaladin Porg Blessed <laughs> with his little um glyph on his forehead and carrying a sill spear, and then I went nuts and just made the rest of Bridge Porg, and not all of them really had uh, much that I could do to customize. So some of them you could only tell who they were by the little name tags I stuck yeah. on them. But others, you know, like Relaine was really easy to tell, and <laughs> yeah. um, Lopin was fun because I I just attached his left wing with a safety <laughs> pin, so he's like action regrowth Lopin. How do you depict a Porg with a fire moss ad uh, addiction? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you you don't. You just put a name tag on it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I've decided but, uh, that the podcast art for this one is going to be Calden Pork Blessed, so that's that's good. Go. That's reasonable. Well, I mean, yeah. it could have been. Got, I've got a picture of him somewhere. It could have been the group charter selfie. Oh, that's true. But that's but the, let, there's, there's more, going to be more than one episode, guys. Like that's true. Yeah. So yeah, there, there'll be plenty that's of true. that. Um, but uh, so yeah, it was uh. Emily Sanderson, who is, of course, Brandon's wife, and Kara Stewart, who is Isaac Stewart's wife, and Isaac does all the awesome maps. And as I said on the Oathbringer panel, if you are not reading the Stormlight Archive for the sole reason of just pouring over her ma his maps <laughs> and finding all of Naz's salty comments, <laughs> I don't even that know what true. you're doing with your life. <laughs> um, but those two in particular just were giggling yeah. madly over Bridgeport, and they were so pleased that there were extra porks they could take home to the people th that weren't there mm -hmm. so Excellent. that was that was yeah. that was my good and you also did the costume contest yeah i was in the costume contest i made this 
ridiculously frothy ball gown. Yes, I heard something else happened at the costume contest. Well, it was on purpose. <laughs> I designed I designed the costume um to be sort of the sort of thing a, a twin born lady of action might wear. Oh. So um I designed the entire set of skirts on a quick release. And um so I had trousers and my gun belt, my metal vials all un underneath this ridiculous hoop skirt that someone actually called like a cupcake dress, which was remarkably accurate. <laughs> um, it, it just looked like something that, yeah, it was like a fancy cupcake. Um, so yeah, apparently I've, I've offended Evgeny's Vorin uh, sensibilities with all of this. Dear listeners, <laughs> our fellow shardcaster went on stage and took her dress off. My Vorin just the skirts, and I had trousers on the entire uncovered dress off. too. <laughs> that is that is also my Vorin so cannot bear the shame of associating with this person anymore. Dude, I was walking around the entire time with my safe hand uncovered, and you never said a That's word. That's because a true gentleman doesn't look at a lady's safe hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that that cosplay sounds amazing. Like, it is it was, amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. I, I I got a lot of compliments. I actually did get a judge's choice award. Um, for those of you who don't know her, uh, Lindsay, uh, who is the basis for Lynn in Bridge yep. Four in Oathbringer, yep. she was the judge who gave me her judge's choice award. Yep, excellent. Yeah, Lynn's cool. Scout Lynn. Yes, she's awesome. Uh, she helps moderate the um. Reddits, correct? Yep, the, uh, the Stormlight Archive Reddit, at least. Yeah, she's Cald and Stormblast on there, and she actually is helping write the Oathbringer reread on Tor. dot com. I think. Uh, I think it's her and Alex. I think so. Yeah, I that think makes she sense. did mention something about writing that, something that, for that, Tor. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> that makes. Sense. Uh, Argent, what what were what were your highlights? What were my highlights? Um, yeah. Well, top three. Top three. Definitely getting to meet a lot of Team Sanderson, almost all of Team Sanderson, really. Um, just hanging out with them, um, introducing myself, apparently when necessary, because as <laughs> as I, m much to my surprise, some of them did know who I was, and still am. Um, <laughs> Peter knew me as the guy who looks like Brandon when he doesn't have a beard, which <laughs> is <laughs> missing the whole, the whole mini me shenanigans. <laughs> um, debatable, but, but that's how, how he knew of me. Um, I, did, I did get to meet both Kara and Karen. Um, lovely, lovely people. They're wonderful. Um, uh, Isaac is, is one of the people from Team Sanderson that I spent probably the most time with. And and he was just fantastic to to hang out with. Um Isaac's awesome. Isaac he's, is is he's awesome. He's the most laid back person in the universe. That's great. He <laughs> is, yeah. So that that's that's one thing. Another highlight, uh just getting just getting to meet so many so many nerds that I that I share nerdery with Right. Uh so many so many common interests, just hanging out in the lobby, talking stuff about the shard, talking smack about Eric, discussing no. theory crafting. <laughs> you know. As 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 one does. Um yeah. we sing the song of your people. <laughs> uh as as somebody who doesn't have many Cosmere like real life friends yeah. to hang out with and and i do have more than most as i understand it by the way uh my brother is into cosmere i've got several close friends who are at least a little bit into the cosmere um i have i i have brandon coming to my city coming to chicago ev every year regularly yeah. uh yeah. so i so i get to meet him and fellow fans there so i am in a better place than most i feel like but Jordan Khan was an order of magnitude it's, above it's that. So much, yeah. I'll say I, I think I've I've convinced two of my friends to read Mistborn. I never managed to convince them to read further than that. But oh. I remember my first my first Cosmere like group meetup was the London signing. And yeah, just getting to hang out with just like a big group of other Cosmere nerds and just chat away about Cosmere things is so much fun. And it's great doing that like face to face. Oh yeah. 
It is. Yeah. It absolutely mm-hmm. is. And um, up until up until Jordan Khan, I would have I would have said that uh, Brandon's signings are kind of the highlight of my life. And so <laughs> Jordan Khan is a three day signing on steroids. Yeah, <laughs> um, which which obviously fantastic. If you've if you've ever gone to a signing and and you've enjoyed if you, if you didn't enjoy it, you're weird. Uh, but if you did enjoy it. <laughs> Um, multiply that by six, and and that's shorter and count, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So that's two highlights and three highlights. Uh, number my number one highlight: um, puppy eyeing Brandon into a a fifteen twenty minute private Q and A. You you we do have a you. lot of. He leveraged his birthday so I did. Hard. So I went. I went, one of the primary reasons I went to Jordan Khan is because April twenty second is my birthday, and and while Jordan Khan usually lands in in those last ten days of April, um, it doesn't always land on my birthday, except this time. Yeah. <laughs> And and so I combined that with the fact that it's the 10th anniversary of Jordan Khan, combined <laughs> with the fact that I am in a much better financial situation now than I was, well, ever in my life. Uh, so I go, hey, I can I can do that. I feel confident enough to do that. And so I went there, and the plan was I'm gonna go to the signing uh, because I knew there was gonna be a signing, and and I will uh, drop all of this information on Brandon. And leverage that to get some juicy, juicy information out of him, uh, and whether that was information I was I was going to be able to share with the fandom or not, uh, that's a different topic. Uh, but turns out he was not gonna he was not gonna do like a like a post signing thing like he usually does on on signings, and so I, I managed to uh, ambush him in the hallways, uh, which for those of you who follow Discord is a different event from the ambush Q and A. Yeah. <laughs> um literally and, and, in Arcanum there's a audio file called Ambush Q and A. Yes. It's perfect. I now we're involved. getting our listeners to have all sorts of ideas. This is yeah. this is this is the Don't so, actually ambush, ambush Brandon, please. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um yeah, the, the ambush was he was walking out of a out of a panel that I was on. And and so I was like, hey. And so so I told him all of that and and uh, he was the the, the generous and, and polite soul that he is, kind yes. enough to offer um, me some of his time as he was signing just stock and and, and bookstore stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that's yep. uh, I mean, I can I can fit that into my schedule. That's acceptable. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and so you got I some did. Good quotes. I did. I did get to grill him uh, for like 15, 20 minutes, just nonstop. Yeah. Um, there- those rapid fire question times post signings are hit yeah. oh, the, the good that's that good oh, stuff. Oh yeah, there. that's where you get the good <laughs> that's stuff. That's the good stuff. Yeah. Um fellow not fellow, dear listeners, after twenty minutes of nonstop Brandon QA and after we said bye, I'm like, okay, I'll see you in Chicago next time. And he ignored me. Uh, <laughs> presumably because he was tired of me by that yes. point. Yeah. I was legitimately lightheaded. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like one of my one of my friends, a fellow guy from Chicago who who came with me, he joined me at the end, just randomly walked by the lobby and, and saw me talking with Brandon. And and as as the two of us were walking back to uh the closing ceremony, which was going on at the same time, I just had to sit down. And I, <laughs> I, I sat down on the floor. I'm like, woof, I need to take a break after that. <laughs> um so that was an experience. That's great. Uh, I heard there was also there- a glyph panel. There was a glyph panel. Um, Isaac Stewart's art director at Dragon Steel Entertainment uh, did his first panel, um, which which he says was going to be either something about map making or stormlight glyphs. Uh, eventually, he he decided on glyphs, which I'm very happy about. And it was. Um, well, it was a workshop, not a panel. I should say that. Okay. Uh, because workshops do involve um, audience participation, stuff yeah, that yeah. the audience needs to do. Um, as an example, there was a different workshop unrelated to Dragonsteel about casting Molten Pewter. Ooh, um, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Which, which I should have okay. gone to. In retrospect, I should have gone to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of regret not making it to the Warbler panel myself. That would have been oh, cool. Yeah. What panel? Warbla. Warbla. Uh, there was there was a panel on on how to do thermoplastics. Oh, 
That's cool. Us costuming nerds yeah, yeah, are yeah. hardcore, <laughs> right. man. Indeed. Um, and and so Isaac's thing was he he showed up. He was like, I've never done a panel before. This is going to be super weird. We're probably going to mess it up. And then he proceeded to talk to us about how he um about, about his process in in glyph creation for the Stormlight Archive, uh, which for those of you who are familiar at least a little bit with Stormlight, they are very very intricate glyphs uh, that a lot of the fandom has been trying to decipher for years uh, to to some success. And and it was him talking about the process, him demoing, hey, I've made these glyphs um, recently. And one of them was two glyphs that, that say happy birthday. And one of them was uh, the Alethi glyph for, um, I believe, Doctor. Which I will eventually post photos of because uh, I need to I need to approve this or get these approved by Isaac. But the 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 Alethi glyph for Doctor looks like the TARDIS. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I love this so much. Um, so that was that was maybe about half an hour of Isaac talking and demoing stuff and showing us how uh, he does glyphs, and then another half an hour where he walked around the room and and helped us work through the handouts uh, that he had given us, where we were trying to draw our own names as um, as Alethi glyphs. That's and not fair. You had the master design your <laughs> yep. name. Yep. That's uh, amazing. Yep. That's uh, that's the thing we're going to talk about another time. Let's move on. Woo! There was one more thing that I hadn't talked about. And yes. uh, most of the other charters missed this because they didn't realize they could get into the signing a little late. Um, is because they, they scheduled the signing at the same time uh, the Sanderson trivia panel was. Which we're like, no, but one of the pitfalls of Jordan Con is that there is so much awesome stuff going yeah. on all the time. No. You can't possibly get to everything you could want to. It and does sound that it, way, it, big time. Yeah, it it's an it, it really is an amazing con and the people who run it are fantastic and they put so much work into it. Um but no, I got to participate in Sanderson trivia and my team took first place. Hey. So that was yeah. really awesome. cool. I got this little thing of swag. I've got a medal that says I'm a knight radiant. That's really very cool. cool. You actually participated Karen with the wiki, didn't you? Oh. Yes, yes. Our team came out one point ahead of Karen with the wiki, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that there were a couple of non-Cosmere questions in there. Uh. <laughs> but we actually got every question. Um, and we were the only team to do so. There was one like mid, in between round bonus question that was like you can if you name all these things, you get a point for everything that you name. And I think we only managed like two or three. So there may be other teams that got more than of those than we did, but overall we we did really yes. really well and we were a really good well-rounded team because at some point during the thing there was something that one of us knew that none of the other three did <laughs> who else was on your team is there any were there the charters um or? no no there weren't any other ah. charters um one of them was my best friend um another was a fellow who's involved in sanders track um, he's he's another fellow panelist person at Jordan Con, and the fourth one was some random guy who needed a team, oh, and we took enough. him in, and we were glad that <laughs> we did because he got a question that none of the rest of us could remember. Excellent. So there 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 was one other thing that happened at Jordan Con. That there I, were I think many is, things that happened, man. Well, yes, but, <laughs> yeah, but I, the matter of trying to remember them all yes, off the top but, of but our there, heads. But there there was one thing that was. Very exciting. Where Brandon read something oh, yeah. from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yes. he did. Yes, I thought you were talking about something that wasn't on our list of things. <laughs> right, so that's you're, 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 you're no. segueing. No, I'm gotcha. doing a segue. <laughs> oh, did you not go to the super secret underground rave party? You yeah. know, <laughs> Brandon read a thing that he wrote long ago, uh, eight nine years ago. I believe he said. Yes. Uh, yep. That is absolutely crazy called The Traveler. And we absolutely need to talk about this. A hundred percent. I got so. This is very exciting. Um, the Traveler. Uh, this was this was during the um, the, the general kind of public Q&A slash reading slash lecture um, bit that Brandon does on, on his signings. And the way 
uh, the way he led into this was um, was near and dear to my heart because the last question of the public Q&A was my question about whether he uh, occasionally puts things in the books just to as 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 like a fan service, right? Like, yeah. does he go, hey, I know that I have people who obsess every over every little bit of detail. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in here for them. And which he does, by the way. You can you can read the full thing on Arcanum. And then he moves on and is like, Yeah, <laughs> I uh I wrote this thing several years ago. Um I couldn't really put it on the website because it was a little too deep into the Cosmere. So so we're gonna read this here. And he announces the name The Traveler. And I am not ashamed to say I made noises. <laughs> <laughs> I made noises. Happy, happy noises. I noises. would be ashamed to reproduce on record. <laughs> yes. But if you had heard me at that time, dear listener, you may have incorrectly assumed that I was a 14 year old Japanese girl from an anime. <laughs> <laughs> so when when you heard the title The Traveler, what what did you think that was going to entail? Hoid. You, yeah. you immediately in, jumped in to Hoyd. Yeah. Point two seconds. The traveler <laughs> translated to Hoyd in my head. Yeah, and and I mean, he's not yeah. wrong. Well, let's let's just be clear here. You should go read that right now if if you if you haven't because we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about all this and you you should you should do yeah. that. Pause or listen to it. The audio is right there. That's true. Yeah. If you yeah, want to yes. get it straight from Brandon himself. That's right. Him narrating it itself. So let's let's get into it because. What is this story about? Oh, it's not only about Hoyd. It's <laughs> Hoyd talking to Frost. Yeah. On Yolen. <laughs> On Yolen after oh. Hero of Ages. Oh, so he he opened the reading and and he said he said the setting, right? The environment, the pure white leaves and 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 all of that, which I assume by now you've read, dear listener. And it sounded Yolen ish to me. Um and 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 then so so here here's one of the one of the interesting things for me in this piece, right? It is yeah. it is written in Hoyd's voice almost. When you when you read a line like to say he wore rags would have been an insult to many a good wife who kept her washing rags in much better shape than the traveler's <laughs> costume. Like this is the kind of thing that Hoyd would say, right? Yeah. yeah. And then and then further down Hoyd is first and foremost a storyteller. A storyteller. Yep. He's he's the he's the bard, right? In the in the DD campaign. Um <laughs> yes. But but yeah, the, the the moment the moment we got to this kind of uh, shift in tone because it starts off as neutral and then it goes to that. And I was like, yeah, this is this is great. And then somebody walks on stage essentially, and that person sounds like like Frost. And I made more <laughs> noises, and, and I, I I I think I may have actually literally grabbed the person next to me and and shaken them and gone like Frost, Frost, this is Frost, Frost. <laughs> Yes. So ha- let, let's let's back up a second because some of our listeners might not know what we're talking about. So first of all, we think this is Yolen because uh, Mraze had like a white branch from Yolen, right? That, yeah. That's right. Well, yep. specifically, like if you've read the sample chapters for um, Liar of Partenel, we get a very good glimpse of Yolen's ecosystem, or rather, ecosystems. Yeah. Yeah. There's the normal Earth-like ecosystem, and then there's the Fane life, which yes. are which is very strongly associated with the color white. Yes. Yes. And secondly, we got to talk about Frost. And Frost, uh, y- you're he's a dragon. He, he is he a, a dragon. dragon. No. He is dragon. He hey, is yo. a legit Cosmere dragon. Mm-hmm. Um, and remember in. The way of kings. When there was that letter, that was Hoyd writing to Frost about mm-hmm. Odium. Yes, and then in words of radiance, Frost replies and it's like, "No, we need to be restrained." And yeah, and so then this happens, and this, uh, one of the first things that happens once they greet is 
Hoyd just says, uh, Ati and Laris are dead. So Ruin and Preservation are dead. And yeah. Yeah, just bringing that news to Frost. We, we then get a nice little line about his pupils being rimmed with silver far too metallic to be natural, at least for a human. <laughs> and and that's, that's the clue that this is Frost and not just some random yeah. dude. Yeah. Also, yeah. Although, next- although any dude on Yolen would be a non-random dude. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. there are point, probably and- people on Yolen who are not important, right? Yeah. A, but, a but, good wife. Or at least that we don't already know about. Yeah. Yes. yes. A uh, good wife on Yolen would be a person of interest. To me. <laughs> and also uh, that silver medal, uh, Dragonsteel? Yes. Hey. We, we, we don't know much about Dragonsteel, but we know that Dragons it is on dragons in itself. their bodies or off their Yeah, it's not on clear, them, but uh if you read the uh not canonical, but the Dragonsteel Prime uh chapters that were posted last year, uh you do see a dragon and there is dragon steel like on the dragon itself. So yes. okay. and it's they like are also shape chapters. That probably makes sense because as somebody who has not read the sample chapters of Dragon Steel, um my immediate impression was not that this is a hint for for the presence of Dragon Steel in Frost's body, but it's a hint that he's not a human, he's a dragon, and that's just how yes. dragons look like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I guess it's a little bit of both, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, we should also that's point why out it's that. called Dragon Steel. Yeah. It, it grows on dragons. Yeah. <laughs> there we is a reason why it's called that. Yeah. We should also point out that in the Cosme, it seems that dragons can shapeshift. Which is yeah. why he looks like a human. He, yep. he, 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 dragons in shift. Cosmia aren't just humans with silver eyes. They are... Yes, something. yes, yes. <laughs> they, they, they do have dragon forms. Yeah. And yeah. that if you read the Dragon Steel for chapters, seeing that dragon, that's the only cool part of that. Just, just <laughs> straight up. Uh, th- there's some other cool stuff. Uh, also, the very next line after that pupil's line about it being silver and metallic, uh, Hoyd just says, you sly old lizard. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's very simple. Yeah. Like, you knew. I came here to tell you cool stuff yeah. you already knew. You <laughs> so yeah. The next two lines are like particularly good. Because Frost goes, like, I did not interfere. You meddle in things we promised to leave alone, things that we and Hoyt interrupt some made no promise. Yeah. yeah. Which like, ah yes. yes. Oh god, I got chills. <laughs> I know. And the next line's great, uh, where Frost says, You made your choice. Why now seek for things you so eagerly denied? My friend, it's the dangerous desire, the lust for power best untouched, that created the situation in the first place. There's a lot in these three lines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We do know that Hoyd had a chance to take up a shard yes and he refused it yes and that's absolutely what this is referring to yes there's also pretty heavy implication and we probably already know that frost is not a shard holder but he has no interest in in meddling all that yes vessel yes we're gonna we're gonna edit that heresy out i know (laughs) i'll just edit it with my voice saying vessel (laughs) but yeah no i totally agree and also it, it does seem like people wanted that power and that's what like shattered Aiden Alcium. That's kind of mm-hmm. that implication. They shattered Aiden Alcium to get the power. Yes. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Right. And this is the first hint we've got of what the motive behind the shattering was. Yeah. 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 And and further down a little bit, there's some hints at, at, at Hoyd's motives for oh, what yeah. he's been doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But before we get further down, this one yes. also reaffirms Frost's and the 17th Shard, the in-world organization, not ours, um, motive for doing what they're doing, which is nothing, right? Yeah, Um, yeah. not interfering. Frost definitely comes off as somebody who doesn't like the current situation, uh, but is content of just like, with with letting it We don't want to make it worse. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Yeah, he doesn't like it, but he's afraid that anything he could possibly do would just make mm-hmm. it worse. Yep. And then we go oh. further down. Oh, yes. This this is crazy. <laughs> crazy. Where Frost. What does this even mean? Addresses Hoyd. Well, first asks if 
uh, if if uh, Hoyt found what he was seeking, uh, to which Hoyt's Hoyt like eh, shrugs, shrugs, and then and then Frost continues with, "You will not find a way to restore what you have lost, old friend. It is impossible." What? And then Hoyt goes, "You don't know that the old rules no longer hold. Besides, I've heard of a place. It doesn't matter. I don't care." This it isn't does. about the dead, or it's not just about the dead. At least, Hoid. okay. Hoid, Hoid oh. it does matter. Hoid, oh. you don't go. I've heard of a place, and then you say it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, okay. Several, so many things right there. So Hoid lost something. Apparently, someone who died. I guess. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, mm-hmm. so my take on this. Yeah. Which which is not a take I got a lot during Jordan Con. Like my thoughts immediately went to Hoyt is trying to restore Aiden Alzium. You say. And I've seen a lot of the reaction on the Discord and okay. on the forums. Right. Okay. Uh, and so it's not necessarily yeah. that Hoyt lost something or someone, it's about the losing of the status quo, so to speak. Um, unless then he is trying to put back uh, uh and back together in order to restore someone else i mean it may not be that's his final end game it may be the means to get to the end but game sure. the someone who um, could be dead is in an alcium that could totally just yes, be what yeah, that's yeah. referring to right it, yeah it could be and it, yeah. it might not yeah. Be. yeah absolutely yeah and and that's kind of the other uh kind of dominant option that i've been hearing people say that well he's not trying to restore Aiden alcium he's trying to restore a loved one um, mm-hmm. which yeah. not mutually exclusive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we also... We- well, it, he might need Adonalsium's power in order to yep. do yeah. it. But I, I don't know how credible I find that because he makes a point that the possibility of restoring this person is only possible now that Adonalsium is gone. Yeah. It's like the old rules it no is longer true. hold. Mm. Yeah, which uh. is an indication that the shattering changed how things, you know, work, Sure. Right? Yeah. New because, new magics are different than old magics. Yeah, yeah that's sense. that's fair. But he's still trying to collect all of those yes. new magics. Yeah, I mean, uh, I so true. okay. So if he's trying to bring someone back, this does make sense as to why he'd be going around collecting the magics. So essentially, he'd be he's trying to find one of the magic systems that allows him to now bring someone previously back. I, sh- are we ass- I can only assume someone who's passed to the beyond, or. He- yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe they yeah. were lost in some other way. Uh, Hoyd's got some really weird things magically going on with him in the first place, so maybe this, love, this yeah. lost loved one has some weird magic things going on with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we know he had a brother as well, don't we, from Dragonsteel, Liar of Parcenel? Um, or is that non canon now? Brandon has said that he has had a younger brother. Okay. And that is, that is a canonical answer. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, word of Brandon, canonical answer. Yeah. And he has had love interests over the years. True. Yeah. Yep. Or when you live that long, you know. <laughs> yeah. You gotta got do something right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and then the quote moves on with, besides, I've heard of a place. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard of a place. It doesn't matter. Uh, well, th- obviously it does matter, oh, as wait. you said before, but just... Breaking my heart, man. Uh, talk, at talk least, talk at, least <laughs> at least Brandon didn't name drop Vax again. Like, yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> oh, that's God. what people went to <laughs> with, like, Vax, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I have heard the theory that this the place he's referring to is Threnody, which has weird interactions with the dead. That is very okay. true. Brandon has said that Threnody is of interest to Hoyd for reasons oh. he has not revealed. Okay. That is interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. I, I don't really know what else that could mean other than like something we have no idea at all what yeah. it means or Threnody, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Or 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 Vex, but that's kind of under the we don't know anything about that. <laughs> is it a planet? Is it something else? Is Brandon trolling us by just raffoing everything and saying, "Oh, it might not be a planet." All Thanks. of the above. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, then there are still shard worlds out there that we don't. Yes, yeah. that is also true. We, oh, yeah. we've, yep. we've, we've got what five shards that we know nothing about, which could be set yep. on major shard worlds. We have we have potentially yep. five major shard worlds that we just don't know. And also, we uh, don't have the uh, know anything about where the 
shard who wants to survive is, you know? No, yeah. That's, that's not one of those five. Obligatory. Yeah, that's not a survival shard. That's, <laughs> it, that shard is not named survival. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, then it ends with Frost saying, so it's a simple vendetta then. How many years have you lived and you s- still can't learn the wisdom of just letting go? A simple vendetta. You saw what Atinirli did. I would not think it my vendetta that should worry you, old, old friend. Dun, dun, dun. And scene. Mm-hmm. And uh, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we thinking what Ati nearly did is just destroying a planet? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah killing lots of people. Yeah. And, and you know he wouldn't have stopped there. No. Yeah. Oh, no, I disagree. Um, killing preservation. He could be referring to that. Because reading this now, I didn't really know what this was referring to when it said, you, it's not my vendetta you should be worried about. I feel like maybe he's referring to Odium. He's oh, like, yeah, he's, he's totally referring to Odium. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think when... The vendetta part, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think when he says you saw what AT did, nearly did, was referring to killing the planet. It was referring to killing preservation. Yeah. Um, okay, sure. May sure. have been a little bit of yeah. It could be a little, absolutely, I mean, yeah. you know... Yeah. I mean, killing another shard is one thing, but going out and wiping out entire civilizations is a whole magnitude But we know worse. Hoyt doesn't have a problem with that, because in Way of Kings, he was all like, I can't remember well, what this- Well, it's not necessarily that he doesn't have a problem with it. He said that, you know, he would shed tears for Roshar. True. He would not enjoy yeah. it, but he would take it as collateral damage if it was absolutely necessary. Yeah. I expect that maybe him referring to keeping Odium trapped there, even if it means destroying the planet. Yeah. Okay. Mm, that makes sense. I don't. And and may, maybe. Well, no, we're not going off topic. I don't think <laughs> Hoyd's goal on Roshar is to keep Odium trapped, because that's essentially what Frost says in his letter response. Uh, where he goes, no, I'm I'm okay with the current situation. Um, what what Tanavast did was fine. We can keep this going. Odium is contained, and that's him but, disagreeing. Uh, Hoyt wants with, him wiped off. The presumably, map. yeah. Mm-hmm. What I find interesting is that so this is after Arrow One. So yeah, clearly Hoyt, Hoyt must know that like like uh, Leras and AT dying. Happens literally like Caesar takes up the two shards almost immediately after that happens. So yes. Hoyd mm-hmm. must be aware that uh, Caesar took up those two shards. He doesn't. Oh, he doesn't seem too bothered about that. He seems to be like, "This is a situation I'm happy with leaving now." And he mm-hmm. left and went back to Yolen. Well, I mean, we know that Caesar is pretty well balanced oh, by holding the, both the yeah. shards. And you have to remember that. Hoyt and Frost knew Ati and Leros, like, yeah. like yeah. before they were vessels. Like, yes. So it, I, I understand why, like, he's focusing on that and not really talking about, oh, yeah, this random Joe Schmo, like, then took up their powers. Like, that's yeah. not important to the conversation, to these mm. divine things that have lived forever. I yeah. think Basically, I think I'm going to disagree with that statement. Um I I do think that the focus on AT and Leras was expected, considering that they they all knew each other personally. But you can't just ignore the fact that somebody now holds two of the shards of Adonauseum. Yeah, for like, for what we understand to be the first time ever. It seems um, worth mentioning. And- Given that we know that Hoyd does eventually contact Sazed, I think maybe he was kind of taking a step back and just to see what Sazed was going to do mm-hmm. as Harmony. Yeah. Sure. Just to kind of get take his measure and, and figure out what kind of person yeah. he was. Because it could be an enemy. It could have been it could have been not You don't reveal yourself to the enemy yeah. until you know exactly what to yeah. do. Like and I will point out that Hoyd starts with the Auntie and Leros are dead, which makes sense. Like that's the people they knew, and that, and I assume that he would have gone on, but then he notices, like, yeah. oh wait, you're not reacting. Like you, you were watching. Knows. Yeah, yeah, you so, already like, knew this. Yeah, yeah. 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 sure. Yeah. So it's like they but, don't need yeah, to talk about that necessarily, but they probably will. Yeah, 
It does seem like his vendetta is not against the idea of people holding shards. He seems to not have a big problem with that from the yeah, yeah. looks of things. He I, I seems- would say his vendetta is against race, like Odio. I mean, they used to be friends and are friends no longer. I don't, I, and, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that was the first in the first letter, like talks about that vendetta against race and Bavadin. Yeah. It's right there. It wouldn't yeah. be the same word, would it? Right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah it makes sense. Uh, yeah. This makes sense. Less vendetta and more. I am extremely concerned about what these people are up to. Yeah. How canonical would you rate this? Um, so I, I actually have been thinking about this. I think it's on the level of the deleted Emperor's Soul um, prologue okay. with, with Hoyd, where it's like, a scene like this happened in canon, but not this exact version. Uh, yep. Like um, like Yasna's unreleased scene in between mm, Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that's exactly canon. Like he wrote well, that the too. question came up after this, okay. Uh, okay. and 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 by the question came up, I mean Brandon walked up to me with a smug smile on his face, <laughs> <laughs> and was like, "So what do you think? Did you, guys, <laughs> did you guys know what I was gonna read?" And and my brain was still catching up with with like I was I was processing, uh, but he did say that this is as canon as a first draft would be. So, okay. so going to Ian's, yeah, this is this is kind of canon, but obviously small revisions like the dialogue may change, I, what Void um, and Frost reveal and not may change, but the idea is there. I was gonna say because as canon as a first draft, like do, oh, if we consider something like Way of Kings Prime as like a first draft, yeah, that, that would. <laughs> I was gonna say well, that would. I mean, that, that would mean this is not. Canon. Uh, I think that's more like on the level of a zero draft, which yes. is, yeah. Like yeah. an in progress. There, there's difference between a zero draft and a first draft. Yeah. Brennan completely rewrote the Way of Kings. Yeah. So. And and that's why it's Way of Kings Prime and Mistborn Prime yeah, instead no. of, hey, right. here's the draft. Okay. But that makes sense. They are different books in his mind. Yeah. yeah. So I am, un- until this is released at, at some point in the future, which some of us speculate will be in the Well of Ascension, uh, not the Well of Ascension, but the Hero of Ages leather bound. Uh, coming out oh. later this year, like similarly like, to how the Hoyt scene in the Elantris 10th anniversary edition was. Um, so until that happens, in my head, this is canon. Yeah. Did he actually indicate that it's going to be published at some point? This bit? Um, I I want to say yes, but I'm not sure. Okay. And uh, did he indicate that there was more to this that he just wasn't reading? Or that he just stopped uh, writing it at the stage. It is unclear. Um, yeah, it it could go either way. Because he, I know he said that he was thinking of posting this on his website long ago, but it would have yep. been this would have been really crazy in 2010 <laughs> before we got the, the even the first letter in Way of Kings. That would be insane. Yeah, uh, we have a lot more Cosmere knowledge now, so we don't know. I it it is it is kind of complete on his own i would very much like to see more of that oh, well yeah. i think we all want to see more of oh, just, Frost, just, just like me... all the time yeah yeah and since this does take place right after era one it would make sense to be in the hero of ages leather bound yeah that's that's kind oh, of why we yeah, are yeah. assuming this yeah uh very, very much very much to to um how very very, very similar to how the uh elantris scene with Hoyd is after the events, yeah. or at least kind of parallel. It's uh, with very the close to that. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that I think the chance for that is high. That would be awesome. Really good send off be... for Arrow One. Absolutely. And we are also going to get the Hemolurgic table around the yep. same time. Yep. Which is super exciting. A lot, yeah. a lot more so than either the Alimentic or the Ferrochemical because of how yes. little we know about hemolurgy. Yep. So much yep. new information. Yep. I'm, yeah. I'm, spicy. I'm cautious about the hemolurgy table because... Are you? Yeah, because the way he describes it in the books, it sounds like 
There are literally thousands of bind points on the human body that can be used to steal pretty much anything from a, the, a human person and put it into something. And, and then where you put that into another human then changes can, can possibly change the effect that what you stole has on that person. It's and so, uh, a bit open-ended, to say yeah, the least. Yeah, and so whilst I am looking forward to the hemolytic table, I have a feeling it's going to... It's not going to give us everything because I don't think it's possible to d put in one diagram every possible combination. You would need something yeah. like a you need like an encyclopedia written by a doctor, like yeah, to, yeah. To, yeah. To, or to an fully expanded explore. mind as the shard, well, like yeah, an, an insert, maybe even a fold out insert, or just a, yeah. a, you know a, a little yeah chunk of you know fifty pages of information that we can pour yeah. over and spend yeah. like five years yeah. studying. So, so yeah, to, add, to add on that, like yeah. Roshek spent a thousand years researching hemolurgy, and he never figured out a new construct. Yeah, yeah. but, but constructs for, are no, everything he constructs yeah. are everything he knew how to make was uh, was just came right in from when he held yeah. preservation. And so, so uh, my my take on the hemolurgy table was going to be. It's going to focus on alumency and ferrochem. I was about to say that, yeah. It's, it's, it's not going to focus on how to steal somebody's intellect if you can steal yeah. that. Uh, it's not going to steal. It's not going to. Maybe, maybe it's going to mention because we know that one of the big things with hemolurgy is the ability to, to transfer connection. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's going to touch on those spiritual attributes, but then they are ferro ferrochemical attributes. Yeah. At least some of them are. Mm -hmm. Um. But then when you're stealing those, you're stealing the ferrochemical ability to manipulate those things. You're not actually stealing those things. So I, have, I completely agree with you. Well, no, you can you. steal like anything yeah, that- You can, but what I'm saying is is what we've seen is we've seen it stealing the- the, 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 the You can steal someone's connection and or you can steal their femochemical ability to manipulate connection. And so yeah. those are, and would those be two different bind points? Would they be two different entry points? Would they be I metal? Would, yeah. does the, how does the metal- Yeah. Hemology is really complicated. I, as you said, I'm expecting it to include how to steal alamancy and how to steal a ferrochemy. Other than that, I don't think we're going to get much more. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably yeah. get the known constructs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, three yeah. of them. Maybe. Maybe a few hints mm -hmm. at other things. Hopefully. Yeah. Just, to, just to keep us on the hook. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's going to be new information at the very least. Like, Yeah. So, 2018, not a very Cosmere year, but yeah. very extra year. Yes. Yeah. Do we have any final thoughts on Traveler and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. It's pretty great. We need yeah. more. We do. After Stormlight's done, then we'll get Dragonsteel. Great. Every, every, that would be every Jordan Con, we should get another conversation between Hoyt and Frost. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, that's that's a, a now, Brandon doesn't make it to every Jordan con. He usually shoots for every other. It may be dropping down to every three Ooh. at some point, but he, he, he doesn't make it to every I, single I, one. I, he wishes he could, but he I was doesn't. gonna say I was very close to spending like two thousand pounds on a plane ticket to come to Gordon because seeing you guys getting all excited and hyped about it, I was like, I want to do this. So I was thinking, oh, I wonder if I can fendangle I, my I, way to I get there you. next year. <laughs> oh my gosh, you should see the Facebook group for Jordan Con ramping up, like starting in March, people start getting exciting, and then after it's done, there's this huge long drop off of people going, Can we come back? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we we talked a lot about uh Jordan Con and the Traveler. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh we will definitely have episodes on many words of Brandon that happened, but uh we'd only get through like a few of them and then we need to cut the episode off so we'll just cut it off here uh which means it's time for who's that cosmic character listeners at home as you know who's that cosmic character is the game where i have a character in front of me sent in by one of you lovely lovely listeners i will read off uh five clues related to this character which you guys also have to suggest don't just send me characters without clues um and then and i'll reach yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> that uh so I'm going to read off these five clues. In between each clue, each one of the contestants gets one guess that there's no penalty for getting it wrong other than all the other people now get a guess as well. But with that one person, you know, no longer. 
being in the running. Also, the shame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the shame of me not knowing anything on Dromonade at all, ever. <laughs> yeah. Yes. If you want to stump Eric, always just send in Dromonade to people. <laughs> I, I'll just research it on the Copper Mind one day. Yeah. Fortunately, we have the Jordan Con winner of trivia with us. Yeah, I'm just really terrible with names. <laughs> oh, well, then you're completely screwed, <laughs> actually. Yay! <laughs> right, so this one was set in by Matt Shaw. So, clue number one, guys. This character is Selish. Mm. It's always Very good clear. when we get, we get it nailed down to a system. Uh, that, yeah, that narrows Helps it down. a lot. I'm going to go with, because we don't know anything, right? Kyine. It is not Kyine. Who was Kyine? I'm Serini's King. uncle. Okay. <laughs> the proper name for Serini's uncle. Uh, I go with Keen. It is not Keen. <laughs> no, I was saying the same thing, <laughs> you jerk. No, I'm going to go with uh, Royal. It is Duke Royal. It is not Royal. Royal. <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce Aeonic <laughs> things the way you want me to, okay. and I do not care. Okay, um, I'm going to guess Mateis. It is not Mateis. Who is Mateis? From the see? Hope of Elantris. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any guesses? I rose? love how this, this show is basically just Ben <laughs> having a clue, us guessing things that he doesn't know what they yeah. are. That's that's my favorite part. Well, that's that's why he's leading the show instead of being that's a, right. a contestant. That's right. Yeah, right? I've I what is it? I've, I've taken part in like one, and I was just completely clueless the entire time. <laughs> uh, yes. Key myth. Would you like yeah. to? The the, the the clues so far are just too open. It's just like random guessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yes. mean, because you you get one anyway. Really? Yeah, you get one. Huh? All right. Um, you don't have to guess. It just. Yeah, it, it, it just it, it just seems like taking dumb shots in the dark. Look, point. sometimes you just win that way. That's how you that's how you get the gold, okay? I get the gold. Uh that's I mean it's a it's a it's a free shot in the dark, so Yeah. Alright, well that uh, Adian. It is not Adian. Alright. Hint number two. <laughs> this character is Erilish. I assume this is how you'd say Ooh. A person. A-relish. A-relish. Yes. A-re. No. Like, you say no. the name we're, of no, the letter. No, we're not going to do that. Because that's <laughs> dumb. Because aeons are dumb. That's aeons dumb. great. And it was that. poorly conceived. Okay, Erik. It is not Erik. Uh, I was, I was making is not a character. Eric's name. Yeah. I, was, <laughs> I didn't pick up on that, okay? <laughs> I got the joke. All right. Um, a relish person. Well, the most obvious guess at this point would be Serini. Well, no. <laughs> Serini's not a relish. No? She's, Wait, isn't she's she? Is, okay, I, maybe I'm getting my names mixed up. I told you, I'm terrible with names. I'm also Where are you thinking with country of? names. I'm thinking of, um, wasn't Erelon the country she was from? Erelon no, is where Elantris is. Yeah, I think I, I think she is from Teod. Uh, okay. All right, yeah. Uh, Jordan Con trivia winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, there were, there were things in that that each of us knew that the others had no clue on. That's why you put together yeah, no, a good no. team. Not one yeah. person knowing everything, but everyone knowing enough ben, to get you. I'm through. going with Yondel. It is not Yondel. I'm gonna go with Telrai. It is not. Tell Rai. Oh, it's gonna be somebody obscure. I already hate this question. <laughs> I'm gonna go with KIs. It is not one of KI. Yeah, you don't know who that is, do you? No, I don't know who any of the characters you guys just named are. Uh, honestly, That's because they're pronouncing the way them the weirdly. That no are going, one I could know exactly who you're talking about and still not know when I heard you say it because I say I, it totally I, different. Yeah, I'm getting really worried. You guys are going to say this character's name, and I'm not going to realize you said the correct character. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Aionic pronunciation's literally the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I love Cell. So. Dumb, <laughs> stupid. Right. Hints number why three. don't we why don't oh. we then also try to clarify which which person oh. we are talking about that is a good idea uh just because of I'm, the I'm, of, I'm of those of us who are incorrect but that's not me 
I'm just saying, normal humans don't You've pronounce these things. You've gotten as many incorrect way. answers as the rest of us. <laughs> right. Clue Go number ahead, three. This character was taken by the Shawod. Shawod. That's Shawod, yes. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Shawod. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, we don't know that lighthouse guy who uh, went into the pool. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been mean, thinking about that too. I mean, he would necessarily be, need to be connected to... All right, well, we do know his question. name. Do we? Yeah. In, yeah. in Atlantis or in, in Stormlight? In Stormlight. Oh, well, Which I'm assuming is his actual name. Like, nah, it doesn't count. Um, but I mean, you can, you can guess that if you want, right? I'm going to go with Karate. Who was that is Karate? The uh, guard captain under Spirit in Elantris. Yeah. She was one of the former gang heads. K A R A T E. No, that's different no. from Karata. Those are different oh. people. I'm oh, going to need a clarification yeah. here. Yeah. Who are you, who are you yeah. guessing specifically? The one that went, that, that Rayodin went with back to the city when they swum. Through the well. Oh, upstream. so you're just pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. What do you mean wrong? It ends with an A. Oh, it does? Okay. Yeah. Then I am, I yes. am in fact, pronouncing it wrong. Yes, definitely. Okay. That one where they went and there was bread and they, she had a daughter. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's completely different from what you said initially. That's fair. It's really good to clarify that because it is Karata. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, that wasn't super obscure. That was that was a pretty prominent character. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. prominent character. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Yeah, hey, we're all good. Where are the other clues? Uh, the other clues were hint number four. This character was deceased before the restoration of Elentris's base Aeon Rayo. And okay. hint number five was this character had a daughter. So well done, Evgeny. <laughs> Ooh. Get down with your bad self. That's the only self I have. <laughs> <laughs> so the second one is oh, you know, you've asked Grace for one, but the second one is from Grace. <laughs> Great, perfect. So she's uh, already sent. Who also went to Jordan Con? <laughs> who also went to Jordan Con? Um, who will be on the podcast eventually? And then was awesome enough at Jordan Con that we wind up spiking her when she got right. home. Yeah. Yes. Well, right. that's that's shard talk for promoting somebody to a staff position. Yes, it, it's much less painful than it sounds. It's a very smooth process this time. <laughs> this time, team allergy. Yeah. Right. Then and number one, this character is a lethy. Okay. All right, we got lots <laughs> we of those. Right. Lots of those. <laughs> mm. If there's any any guesses, you guys don't have to. Make I'm going one. to guess Cobb. It is not. Cobb. <laughs> that is a very good guess. It's a very See, good no guess. one knows what we're talking about with Cobb, but in yeah. the next episode, we'll we'll, we'll talk about Cobb. Yeah, yeah, right, before. right. You you find out next week or maybe the week after. Is it Gaz? It is not Gaz. Sorry, Eva. I, <laughs> I I did this for her, and and Grace betrayed both of us. I'm gonna go with uh, Liren. Who was Liren? Liren. Oh, no, Liren. Okay. Sorry, I'm it sick. Liren. not Liren. But we can all agree that he is, in fact, the best Alethi. Yes. Pretty yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, th th this game, is it usually, like, side characters? Um, it can be, be uh, main characters, it can be side characters, it can be... Okay, yeah. so it can be everyone. So let's just get Adolin out yeah. of the way. It is not Adolin. Sometimes right. it is main... Uh, I, just to give you context, uh, sometimes it's main characters, but the hints provided for them are super vague. interestingly worded and, and Very sometimes vague. it's and sometimes oh, yeah. it's a character that's mentioned literally once right yeah so, i've yeah. tried to avoid those ones yeah don't send in a character that was that's just just mentioned once and never again there's this that's just me uh right Char the clue number two this character has a sibling tian it's not tian <laughs> rip he's dead <laughs> <sighs> sibling, you say? Just a sibling, a. or potentially more than one? Oh wait, <laughs> one that we I thought, know of. I thought so. This is not my guess, but <laughs> I thought I was gonna be super clever <laughs> and be like, 
is it the storm father? <laughs> <laughs> and then it registered this, that you said Alethi. I, I don't think the storm father is Alethi. No. It could be. I, could be. I think some Alethi might take issue with that. <laughs> the word the word sibling now has a very specific meaning in my head, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I am going to guess Elhokar. It is not Elhokar. Well, that's a good guess. Yeah. Good thought, yes. Alethi. Well, I guess one of them, now I'll just bounce to the other, is always Renarin. It is not Renarin. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going through yeah, them. It's people with siblings, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah let's, let, let's, let's exhaust the, the biggest family in Stormlight. <laughs> yeah, you Dalinar. gotta go through a lot of people for that one, yeah. Uh, is is it everyone Dalinar. had a guess with this yep. clue? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, clue number three. This character is in a love triangle. Oh no. <laughs> Kaladin. Oh, Kaladin? It is not Kaladin, and I'm counting that as both of your guesses. <laughs> Fine. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, let's let's get that out of the way. Is it Shallan? It is not Shallan's Shallan. not Alethi. Just- Shallan's not Alethi. Well She's not a Lethi. She is not <laughs> ethnically a Lethi. That's that's <laughs> fair. That's yes. Fair. I'm sorry, I, I fixate it. <laughs> <laughs> these these clues are just we got Short we got Adolin, we brain. got Kaladin. Shalon's right. not. <laughs> so it's it's a different love triangle, right? Different love triangle. Wait, there's another love triangle. It's been buried. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so we're we you guys the listeners can't see. Okay, Weary's we, Weary is over there. freaking out right now. <laughs> Pretty Which great. means we need to postpone this round <laughs> as long as possible so he can get medical help because we obviously yeah, I'm going to get the next two and it's going, I'm going to be completely wrong because that has <laughs> happened before. I was like, Rosemary, any other guesses? As to, you're the only one with a guess left. Um, oh. I'm trying to think of who else would be involved in a love oh. triangle. We need a buzzer because this is going to yeah, be between me and... Yeah. yeah. Now, give us an next clue. Okay, clue number four. This character... Give Ian his moment. ...ends up with an officer. Oh, it's... So- <laughs> 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 right, both, both Ian and Evgeny are suddenly <laughs> speechless. <laughs> they, were, they were so sure. So sure. Hmm. Like, I was going to guess Gavilar. I was going <laughs> to guess Gavilar, too. <laughs> oh, that would have been a good guess. For the oh, record, yeah, that is not my solid. current guess because I know yeah. that's wrong. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, that's yes. fine. Yeah, <sighs> Gavilar what? married an officer. <laughs> 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 Funny. Married an officer, or ends up with an officer rather. I mean, how many love triangles are there in Stormlight? Oh, is it one of the calls? <laughs> The oh, 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 it's, it's the character from the, the um the, the story that the Arden is reading. The it like Pride and Prejudice in Roshar. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> the the character is Wima, I guess is how you'd say her name, who is the main hey, character no of clear. the romance novel that uh, the Ardent Alista is reading in Oathbringer. Oh, Clue man. number five would have been this character is fictional. Which oh, okay. 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 Uh, that was okay. a good one. Well that played. Good. That was good. I like that. Well played. I like that. I like yeah. that. Like I said, it, that, that was one was good. memorable, so I was okay with that one. That one was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I, like, I like how clean number that was five fun. was. I thought yeah. That yeah, that's true. Said, that love triangle. I thought you'd get it, a love triangle. Like. <laughs> See, I was thinking Gavilar Dalinar um, Navani. Yeah. Navani. Yep. yep. Yeah. That was yep. good. Good. That was good. <laughs> well. <laughs> Well played. Well, well, well played. That was played. that was quality. Although we didn't actually get that character's name, but yeah, it's close. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the description was unambiguous enough to, yeah. to give credit. Yeah, yeah. We knew what we were talking about. Yeah. So feel free to follow us on 17shard.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter. You can Find us on iTunes now. You can leave yeah. us a review on iTunes. You can follow us on SoundCloud uh, and like and subscribe on YouTube. You can do yeah. all those things. And also we're on Google Play as well. Yeah. Whoa, cool. Don't and you forget- can come say hi to us in the Discord. Yep. Yeah. Woo. We're everywhere. Don't forget to email your suggestions for who's that cosmic character to who's that cosmic character at gmail.com. The link is yes. it'll be down in the description or the uh, whatever. Yep. yep. Next week we're gonna do more Jordan Khan, Words of Brandon. Well, we're going to start with the words of Brandon. <laughs> we haven't actually gotten any done yet. Yeah. Goodbye, okay. everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 Call.